Hi everyone, it's me again and today I have the pleasure of reviewing the Canon 60mm f2.8 macro USM lens. Just look at it there. Macro lenses let you get really close to any subject you like, which makes them fun to use. And they also tend to double up as good portrait lenses as the maximum aperture of f2.8 and the longer focal length lets you get a nice narrow depth of field, a nice blurry background. This one is designed only for Canon's APS-C cameras like the 650D, 700D or the Canon 60D which I'll be using for this particular test. So this lens will not work properly on Canon's film cameras or expensive full-frame digital cameras. Compared to other macro lenses, this lens is really small and light, which means it doesn't take up loads of space in your camera bag. It feels solid and well built, and it handles really nicely on my Canon 60D camera. Unlike some macro lenses, it focuses internally, so the front of the lens doesn't extend as you focus. The front element is very small, and it doesn't rotate as you focus. The autofocus is very accurate, and as you can see here, the lens focuses quickly and almost silently. The lens also has full-time manual focusing, which is always a very nice feature, and the focus ring is quite smooth and precise to use, which is very important for macro work. Here's some video to show you how easy it is to nail focus manually. And speaking of video, this lens does not have image stabilization, so it wouldn't be great for video work or low light photography. However, you can get lovely close up video footage if you use a tripod. It's a shame the lens doesn't have image stabilization, but it's still a real pleasure to use this thing. The lens is very nicely built indeed. So, how about the image quality of this lens? I think it's fantastic. As you can see, with the aperture wide open at f2.8, the lens is very sharp, even into the corners. There's no visible chromatic aberration, and colours and contrast are very good. Stop the lens down to f4, and the image is razor sharp, all the way down to f11, when the effects of diffraction begin to kick in and soften the picture. f22 is soft, and f32 is unusable in my opinion, although this is normal for nearly all camera lenses. Here's how the image looks close up when you're doing macro work. Again, sharp at f2.8, extremely sharp from f4, with things getting softer at about f16. So technically, this is a very high performance camera lens. As you can see here, there's no problem with distortion on this lens. But at f2.8 there is heavy vignetting, perhaps you can see those dark corners. If you turn on peripheral illumination on your camera, then it will be largely corrected, although the picture quality in the corners will suffer a little. The quality of the bokeh, the out of focus areas, is only okay. Sometimes the highlights can look a little edgy, especially when you stop down, as you can see in this picture. That's a little disappointing, as having smooth bokeh is really important for portrait shots. You can get much more suitable portrait lenses than this, for example the Canon 85mm f1.8, but actually I think this macro lens's portrait shots are decent enough. So is this a good macro lens for you? If you're on a lower budget, then you're probably choosing between this lens and the Canon 100mm f2.8 macro, which I reviewed a couple of months ago. Here you can see them both together. They're both absolutely great lenses. The shorter focal length makes it an easier lens for handheld photography, because you won't need such a fast shutter speed to get a sharp picture, and the wider angle makes it more versatile for general use. The 60mm lens is also much, much smaller and lighter to carry around with you. But the 100mm lens can give you a narrower depth of field for your portrait photography, and the longer focal length is also more flattering for portrait shots. So portrait photography lovers will much prefer the 100mm lens. 
Also, with the 100mm lens, you don't need to get so close to your subject when you're doing macro work, so it'll be easier to get shots of insects who might fly away having the 60mm lens shoved in their faces. The 100mm lens is also compatible with full-frame cameras, so if you plan to upgrade to the 6D, 5D or 1D series of cameras one day, then that lens might be a better choice. But whichever lens you decide on, there's no doubt that the Canon 60mm f2.8 macro is an extremely capable and fun lens to use in every way. Highly recommended.